rest of the world will probably do your, they will probably do their SATs. So when you apply and 200 or 2,000 or 20,000 other people apply, they need to be comparing apples to apples. And then if you kind of excel in your academics here at school and then you're on top of it, you also have your language tests. That's kind of, I mean, I'm not saying it cannot be done, but it's so much better that if you also do your SATs on top of it, then it's kind of like some more proof that you are academically able. Um, also, if we talk about IELTS, make sure it's all nines, like or 8.5s at least. Or let's say you wrote an excellent essay, but your writing is only six on IELTS. That doesn't make sense. So kind of, it, it needs to be well balanced. And I'll talk more about balance, but it's a good question. Again, reach out to school. So every school you're looking into, they will have admissions contact, an email or a phone number. Feel free to shoot them a short email saying, hey, look, really interested in your school, want to apply. Um, do I need to take SAT on top of my IELTS? And they will kind of tell you. And, and I'm pretty sure the answer will be like, it's highly recommended. And when the school tells you it's highly recommended, it's probably a must. So um, that, that's kind of that. Um, Leadership, I really want to talk about leadership, especially um, for those of you going to US schools. For UK, it's not that critical, I think, or it wasn't during my days, but leadership for US schools is really, really central. Um, what I mean by leadership is get involved. Um, if there are clubs and societies here at school, make sure you're a part of them. Make sure you try to get like a leadership role. I don't know, do, do be in charge of treasury or be like, I don't know, executive manager of that club and so on. Uh, do, do you have any societies here at school? Yeah. Okay. Can you name a few of them so that I know? School newspaper. School newspaper? Okay, yeah, great. Debate club. Debate club, yeah. Okay, so you guys. Nice. So you, you, let's say if you, if you go for a major debate tournament and you win, it must be on your resume, right? I mean, that's a great thing. If you, if you are an editor for a newspaper, for, for a school newspaper, that's a fantastic thing to put on your resume. Do you have a question? Okay, of course. And um, what, what's that? Uh, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. So, so you do the. So we we, we split by teams, and every team is a country, yes. or okay. not in MUN. Like in MUN, you represent some country. Okay. Not especially your country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I heard I heard about that. I've never done that before, but. Oh, and also we will participate in World Scholars Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah fantastic. So if if you, if you, if you, if you get the first place, which I hope you do, right, that goes on your resume straight away. Uh, and that's just a fun. will go to Yale University, like if yeah. There you go. Then you go to Yale. Fantastic. No, no application needed, right? Just skip the presentation, just concentrate on that. Uh, no, but like you kind of get the idea, right? Um, so that's very important. And the schools, when you're going to apply, right, you're competing with the rest of the world. You're competing with the brightest minds from, I don't know, from India, from Australia, from Germany, like all these, all these guys, they all want, like, all want to have the same spot. Trust me, you're not worse than any one of them. You just need to put in work, you just need to put honest work, you need to put time, and you need to make sure that it's not just my scores, right? Oh, I, I got like 1600 on SAT. I'm sure there are people who get 1600 every time they take a test. That thing alone will not take you to the top schools. It needs to be balanced across this board, right? So you need to have a healthy balance between different components. And it's so much better when it's like kind of balanced up here, while you can have like a spike in your SAT scores, but like no leadership experience. Like to balance this out is so much more difficult that kind of improve your average. So make sure your average is pretty high on all these dimensions. Um, volunteer experience, I know in Azerbaijan now, in the last five years, it became like kind of a boom. People love to volunteer. They go to Assam Kidman, they go to Formula One, they go to like, I don't know, football events to volunteer. If you can get top brands under your belt, please make sure you do it. If you can volunteer at Formula One, if you can volunteer at any like major global football events that take place here, do it. Like, even if it's one week of your time or two weeks of your time, it is worth it, right? You're not getting paid, that's the kind of, by definition, the volunteer work. But like, do it, it's very, very important. The schools love it. They, unfortunately, Asanji Math, no one will really know in the US because they don't need to change their, <laughs> to change their papers uh, or get a driving license or what have you in Azerbaijan. But like, make sure you get top brands. If you can spend, let's say, a month uh, at Ernst & Young or PricewaterhouseCoopers here in Baku, kind of just learning about what they do, make sure you do it. 
like reach out to people, um, show people are very open to these volunteer opportunities. Just try to get this international brand. If they offer some summer programs, I think BP does offer a summer program to kind of get to know them better or something like that. Like just, just do it. Right? These top brands, they will help you a lot with your like overall application process. But what time do we stop? Does anyone know? Uh, 10 oh, okay, great. So we have 10 seconds. Um, yeah, so the, those international brands are really, really important. Like one thing to say is like, oh, I volunteer at like my local organization that no one else knows about. And another thing is like when you say, look, I went to a top, um, yeah, I don't know, like a top audit firm here in Azerbaijan, which is a global firm, let's say EY, for example. And that is just so much more valuable. Um, then the fifth pillar is the, the, is the essay and I'm sure you're writing essays for your homeworks and you do that. Um, school essays are a bit different in a way that it's still like all, it's pretty much all about academic writing, right? But at the center of the essay, it's always a leadership story. And please write it down, it's super important because people don't get it. So I've heard that uh, the uh, sport sphere uh, influenced the university, like, um, so some university they just um, they just need your uh, like sportivity. Sure. I mean, yes. um, this is something we call an athletic scholarship in the U.S. For example, um, what cases are important? It can go. It kind of goes into the leadership and experience bucket. Uh, if you're a top athlete here in the country and you let's say do boxing, right, or you do swimming and you won 20 competitions, that's fantastic to have in your CV. Uh, if you want to shoot for an athletic scholarship, uh, you really have to be a top 1% athlete, right? You have to compete globally. I don't know if you do karate, for example, and you won world championship. Most likely there will be universities in the US uh, who will give you an athletic scholarship. Um, it's also an opportunity. Um, for example, Ivy League schools, they don't give athletic scholarships. So that kind of already will take you out of the bucket uh, for, let's say, Ivy League schools. But in general, it's not a bad strategy. If you're a top athlete, if you want to go like, you know, and join like what LeBron James did for, for, for NBA, he can like completely skip the school. Um, but I'm sure he would have gotten an athletic scholarship, right? But it's, it's a bit of a risky strategy, but uh, I wouldn't put like, again, all the eggs in that basket. But if you are a top athlete, let's say if you won by age of, I don't know how old you are, but by the age of 14, 15, if you won 25 global competitions, I think you have a very good chance of getting into the expulsion. And uh, I'm just interested, but uh, are there any uh, university of jokes like jokes? Like yeah. what? Uh, I'm just interested. Like joke, but what, what's the yes. example you have in mind? Like a uh, university of jokes. Can you be a professional comedian? Yes. Uh, probably yes. Uh, um, yeah, I think if you go to like school like Juilliard in in, in New York, but Juilliard is really like. Music specific, for example, but I'm sure there are like Yale Theatre, like Yale, Yale has its own theatre, for example, and Yale has a school of drama. So if you go to Yale School of Drama, yeah, you can probably be a professional comedian. Uh, I'm not sure why you want to be a professional no. comedian. No, but it's kind of a, it's kind of a talent question, right? I mean, if you are an athlete, you don't necessarily need to go to an athletic school, right? I mean, by the age of 15, if you're a professional athlete, you don't have to prove to the rest of the world that you also need a diploma in swimming. Like, if you can swim, that's probably good enough. If you can swim better than the rest of the world. Same goes for comedy, I guess. If you have a comedian by the age of 15, 14, you probably don't really want to get a degree. You can also do something else and continue being a comedian. There's nothing wrong with being a comedian, right? If you are, I don't know, Trevor Noah or like one of those guys, I mean, yeah, I mean, you probably don't need an Ivy League education, right? The guy grew up in South Africa and he's now a host of a daily, daily show, so yeah, but kind of keep it, my advice would be keep it as your hobby, and if you really excel at it, drop out of school and make millions, I don't know. I don't know, yeah, I don't think there are any like right, right or wrong questions or answers to that. More, more, more questions? No? No more questions? We're done? I'm sure there are questions. I, I would be worried if there are no questions. Either, either you haven't listened or, or you got everything. And neither, 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 I don't believe in these options. So. Go on.
question about motivation letter. Uh -huh. uh, usually, what quantities qualities yeah, you need to like participate in dialogue? Leadership, always, right? It's the central. It's it's not, not only, but it's a central theme. Again, it depends on the school. So let's say if you're applying to Yellow Stanford, I think they are more kind of social responsibility heavy. So in that motivational letter, always should be, right? Always say, look, once I graduate, I want to come back to the region and I want to work for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan. And, and I want to be a deputy minister and a minister by the age of 35. That's really good motivation. The schools will really appreciate it. They will know exactly that you're aiming very high. Every school basically wants to see like future ministers and future presidents and future top CEOs um, being in their class. That's what, they don't want someone who will be like, you know, I'll graduate and I'll be on the couch watching Netflix, right? I mean, that's just not what they're looking for. So even if that's your plan, <laughs> don't say that, okay? Just aim, aim very high. Just say, look, my career, my, my dream is to actually go and work in China, right? I'm the, I speak, anyone who speaks Chinese? By any chance? No. Hello, Ni hao, yeah, Ni hao. Anyone who learns Chinese? Anyone who's taking Chinese class? I know Spanish. You know what? Spanish. You know Spanish? Yeah. Well, Spanish is great, but um, if you speak Chinese, that's a great competitive advantage, right? I mean, I know only one phrase. You know only one phrase. I don't know. Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully you know more than that, right? I mean, but. Kind of, it has to, your story has to flow. If you speak Chinese fluently, let's say, by the time of your application, and then you say, hey, look, I'm from Azerbaijan, but I actually, I want to improve the, I don't know, like the business dealings between Azerbaijan and China, and I want to build that economic bridge. And for that very reason, I want to apply to the Ministry of Economic Development here in Azerbaijan, where I actually, <laughs> just, um, <coughs> if you can get um, also like top references, if you can get references, let's say if you volunteer at the Ministry of Economic Development or Ministry of Education, and by some chance you can get um, a recommendation letter from the Deputy Minister or the Minister, that's fantastic. I mean, like people love that stuff, right? I mean, they will just read into that. But yeah, to, to answer that, yeah, I think it's got to be it's got to be a leadership story, and it's got to be like aim very high, and people will love that. Go on. Related fields in the university, then how can you use leadership as a connection to that? Sure, uh, and I think you bring up an excellent point. I think if you think about talent deficiencies these days, um, I think we're going to have a major, major gap between the where economy is going, like and how the digitalization is kind of taking over the world and the STEM majors, right? So STEM is basically technology, engineering, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's definitely there to stay. It's going to be the major, major field that people will try to enter because that's where the jobs will be in the future. Um, you need to build a connection through what have you, whatever STEM experience you're going to have. Let's say you worked as a sound intern at at a certain lab where you did research and you excelled at something. Let's say you developed your own algorithm to, I don't know, predict the, uh, what have you, the snowfall this winter in Azerbaijan. But if you did something like that, um, you kind of go about the process and how you overcome the, the challenges on your way, but it's pretty much connectable. It really depends on what you want to do, what you've done, and kind of building like a leadership story that connects the two. So, it, these things can coexist. It's not like yeah, like leadership is only about soft skills or not the hard skills. So just kind of think, think about an experience, and then think what you've really learned and what you've done, and kind of develop a story. So it's applicable. I think it's very special. So most people in our school actually do multiple things. I want to ask you how you can balance all of it together in one thing. Okay. Again, play to your strengths. Um, play to your strengths. Research the school. So if let's say you are a newspaper editor, but you also, I don't know why I'm so hooked up on this um, math Olympics, but let's say if you have both, you can put on your resume, but the school actually, like if you're applying to MIT, for example, um, probably should with math, right? I mean, if you're applying to a social science school or, you know, liberal schools like Yale, 
maybe don't concentrate that much on math unless you want to do computer science, right? I mean, it really depends. Know your school, know what's important for school, right? And then kind of look for your experiences and think what will kind of appeal to your school the most, right? So many schools have the essay topic. Like, I, I think the famous one from Stanford was always what matters to you most and why. Like one line subject, very open-ended. Of course, they're looking for a leadership story, but then you need to know what to kind of who the audience is, right? As with any essay, who will read it, who will actually appreciate the experiences you're going to highlight. So, so you have a question. Okay. What? Sorry, what's your degree? Um, so what I did, I did computer science in my undergrad. I did something very specific, so I did oil and gas trading for work. And that was my bread and butter. So I did my master's at the University of Geneva in international trading, shipping, and in uh, commodity finance. And then I did my master's of business administration in here. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, it was always finance and economics, but um, computer science was something I did for my undergrad. And I did a lot of stuff in that, but I never really stayed with it, which I regret. Like, stay with computer science if you're a computer science major. Be, a next, be, be the next Larry Page or you know, Sergey Brin or something like that. Sorry, your question. Okay, so, did, uh, do university make some, like... Is it now a jokes question or is it... <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding, don't. He forgot I want to be dentist. Okay. So, uh, did, do some university make some experiments or exam, master classes like how it works? Sure, okay. So for those of you who want to be lawyers and you want to go into medicine in the US, it's rather specific. Your undergrad has to be anything, hopefully something related to the fields, but not necessarily. But then your med school application or your law school application is actually your advanced degree or your graduate degree. You cannot just go to undergrad and become a dentist, right? So it's going to be a bit different if you go to the US. If you go to Germany, that is kind of pretty straightforward. The same goes for, for the UK. But then once you are done with your formal education, there are programs uh, that you're gonna, you can apply to to kind of get, I don't know, let's say you're a professional dentist, but you also want to learn about orthodontics, right? Then this is something you can do as a pop-up, as a, an add-on degree, let's say. But yeah. It, you can do certificates. My advice to you, don't go for the certificates. Like, I think it's important for some universities, especially in the US, if you do summer school, if you go there for summer and spend the summer at Harvard or Yale or elsewhere, is it going to be a decisive kind of factor to take you or not? I don't really think so. But if you have this opportunity to do it, but to answer your question, it's very specific. I don't know much about medicine, but um, yeah, I'm sure there are opportunities to take those like certificate programs or something, but that kind of comes a bit later in life, so don't worry about it. Yeah.